All right, guys, so I'm sitting here and really looking at this, and I have decided definitely that I want to uh, do a layer of, a small, a light layer of clear gesso. Now, as we know, um, this is just a little cap. I, I just, I'm getting to the point where I just save my caps, my lids, um, if I have too many jars. We're going to get a larger paintbrush here. I need to find my, my wonderful paintbrushes, but they're somewhere. Um, I want to do a layer of gesso over this. This is clear gesso, and what we're doing is we're giving that 100-year-old paper that I've used as the base layer, just a layer of protectant. But putting a little bit of gesso on here, it's going to create a sheen, which is okay because this is water, right? Um, since we're replicating water, I think it's good to have a little sheen to it. We don't want to get it too thick. Um, but we're going to be putting a lot of glue on here and really layering stuff. So let's just protect it while we can. We got it? Let's do it. Let's think about our books a little bit. And you guys know that I like to be really conscious about... That has a layer of gesso underneath of it, but we're going to just put a little bit more of this clear uh, because I missed one little spot right there. I ran out of stuff. Um, I want us to be conscious about the health of our books. Okay, Ernest's. This is the one that I did with the hot glue gun. Don't, I don't love this at all. But I think that once <clears throat> we layer some of these other ones on top of it, especially if I have different colors on each of these, that one goes with that. Okay, that one I want to be the top one. Although this one's really fabulous. Um, okay, we're going to put the more detail down here at the bottom. But what we're going to do, though, too, is... Um, I think I'm going to cut some of these up. This is going to be the top. Now, I'm trying to play with transparency. I'm trying to mm, mimic the water. So um, these two I like much more than this one. What I'm thinking of with this actually is to just kind of cut it up and uh, use the pieces and parts as water, of course, both. To indicate the ripples. I'm going to cut out that center part because I don't really like it. It's very globby. Don't put too much alcohol on top of that Fabri-Tac either. It will dissolve it and you'll end up with a big mess, which is what's happening here. Now, I think some ripples are good, right? That's what we're trying to create here is, is light dancing on the water. That's my goal. Um, because water does dance. Yes, it does. If you don't believe me, go out and watch it.
So I think I got most of the glue goobers off of here. Um, glue goobers happen when you don't let the Fabri-Tac uh, dry all the way. Now, I have this one bit of yellow here, and I should probably have some more yellow over here. And uh, the main reason for that is that that's our highlight. So let's actually pull in this um, ivy green liquid pearl and see if we can't get this water to have just a little bit more highlight in through here. Um, this would be reflecting the um, trees, the bushes, all of that. And we'll actually bring in some more of that um, spray, some of the yellow spray ink again. The mustard seed. It's pretty it's a pretty yellow at least. Let's pull off some of that goober. I like that we can still see some of the text underneath of here. I think that's really unique. Um, I kind of want that main swirl to be right in here. So I'm going to try to keep that a little bit lighter again. Uh, let's look at this one. This is the mustard seed again. I have one out, of course. Here. Now our um, my hands are just filthy. So it does help to have a paper towel to kind of brush this along here a little bit. I am purposely keeping some of this, you know, bottom layer showing, but I don't know if I like that as much. But um, again, it could be reflections of the trees that would be over here. Mm, let's see what we have here. Now that bubbly one, I definitely love here. Uh, but we also have this deeper swirl here that is really gorgeous also. 